Hi, this isn't M. Night Shyamalan, but you're listening to my dear friends at Paper Screen Podcast. Don't forget to hit subscribe to keep updated on all new episodes. Whew, what a twist. One, two, one, two, three. Hey, listeners. Hi, guys. Surprise, bitches. But you thought you'd seen The Last of Us. <laughs> <laughs> we got a special episode for you guys because the season has ended, but we wanted to put this out as a special thank you. So today we're doing a top five of what? Top five favorite movies of M. Night Shyamalan. Yes. We're doing this because M. Night Shyamalan is an influencer. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to work our way up from five to one. So what is your number five? My number five is a split. Ooh. It's, um, I couldn't pick, sorry, but- Um. It, you know, it was just too hard to pick one or the other, but I put Split and The Visit. Oh, nice. Because they're both like, like Split is as like a film more impressive as far as like, you know, James McAvoy and stuff. Yes. But The Visit is so fun. It, it was, is. It's very simple. Yeah. And it's like found footage style. Mm-hmm. Very minimal camera work. Yeah. Because, you know, like a paranormal activity, it was just like... Ugh. All over the place. Or sh- shrink a madu. Skin a meringue. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> okay, Split. Did you like, what did you like about that movie? Split, I really like, I actually thought it was like a really empowering movie about um, abuse. Yeah. And like, I heard somebody be like, I'm sick of like mental illness being like portrayed as like a like evil as an evil thing which i speak about because of Mm -hmm. ari aster his films that i like but have that issue but what was interesting is when i watched this i interpreted so much more in an empowering movie because the gal our friend anya taylor joy yeah this is her first thing no no what was the witch that was before this? Yeah. I remember her from The Witch. And then I saw Split and I was like, oh, that's that one girl. But like in The Witch, I thought she had an accent. Well, The Witch is like, yeah, it's like olden days. Yeah. They, they talk weird. Like... And she is from Argentina. Yeah. We love her Latin girls. Mm-hmm. But she's got a British accent. <laughs> I'm on your tail. I'm on your tail, Joy. Girl, Queen's Gambit. <laughs> Resign. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think just, like, they're both really fun movies. Like I said, I think Split's a better story and, like, has better acting and everything. But The Visit was just so much fun in the theater. Like, a lot of jumps and a lot of laughs. Yeah. You know? The grandparents. Oh, my God. But, yeah. Oh, my gosh. When the grandpa to the kid. And the kid, like, has OCD. Yeah. I was like, what is this movie's crazy? Should we just spoil it? Yeah, we're gonna spoil it. Okay, spoiler alert. Jump ahead if you don't, if you haven't seen the visit and you want to. But we're talking about the diaper scene. <laughs> that was so it sick. It was so gross. So he like <laughs> his shits in a diaper and stuff, and he yeah, he wants a kid to eat it. It was like I just remember he like shoved it in his face. Maybe and- that's what it was. He just like did pie to the face, but with his poopy yeah. diaper. Yeah, and it was like the most jarring part of the movie because like it just happens. Yeah, I was not <laughs> expecting, but yeah. The twists on both of those movies Mm -hmm. did not see it coming. Well, maybe The Visit, but like... Because, you know, M9 has those movies where everything has to have a twist. Yeah. So if you don't know that about his movies... Like, that was a thing, but also, like, he didn't do it in Signs, right? No, the twist was that everything was a miracle. Oh, okay, I guess. Yeah, but it wasn't... It didn't come off as a twist to me, but I guess that is the twist. Uh, Spoiler alert (laughs) (laughs) oops oh i really like some of the stuff they like camera work and like how they just like did things in split actually oh yeah and the like tone and like look of it yeah and like the location is just like very simple it's like this like boiler room or something but also has like a bathroom and shit right (laughs) 
Oh yeah, one thing I like, it's like so fucked up, but like, so you, when we find out about Anya having like in a this horrible abuse story, when one of the personalities is trying to take one of the girls and she just grabs her face and says, pee on yourself. <laughs> like it's so disturbing, but like I liked how like clever and unique it was. Yeah. Because like I don't really see that in movies. Like I don't remember that part. Well, she just grabs her face and says it really fast. Oh. Pee on yourself, because that's like a survival skill she figured out. Oh. When, you know. Yeah. Okay, so my number five. Everyone hates this movie. <laughs> it's The Happening. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't care what people say about this movie. I love watching this. I don't care if it's bad, because it is like... I saw this in theaters by myself, and I liked it. <laughs> I liked how campy it was. And I don't know if it was, like, intentionally campy, but I remember, like, M. Night saying, like, in an interview that, like, that movie was supposed to be, like, a very high-budgeted B-movie. Because mm -hmm. it's, like, kind of, like, an homage to movies like The Blob. Oh, I see. Sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, like, I found more appreciation for it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that great of a movie, but, like, there's so many scenes that, like, I remember. There's this, like, really silly scene <laughs> where they're running away from the wind and it's just like super dramatic how the wind is just like moving and it's like creeping up like a force field coming towards them i don't know why i thought that was cool to me <laughs> <laughs> but like okay this movie is like people killing themselves yeah. because like there's like something in the air like it's like <laughs> it's yeah happening. And it's like, these plants are, like, murdering us. <laughs> okay, can you think of another movie that does that? What is it called? Blind Bird or something? Oh. Bird Box? Yeah. yeah. Bird Box is like that. Yeah. There's this part where, like, the guy's, like, laying on the grass and, like, the lawnmower is, like, oh. running through him. And oh. I'm like, oh, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Gross. So there's that. The fucking old lady that's, like why you iron my lemon drink it's oh, like so funny yeah and then the funny part is when she's like busting her head through the window oh yeah oh my gosh <laughs> it's just so funny it's so... to me is it weird that i like this movie because of that reason? i don't know i saw it in the theater and i didn't like it and i never revisited it but i'd like to revisit it you should get past like marky mark's like terrible acting he was like miscasted for this movie mm. like i wish someone else mark ruffalo he probably would have made this look like 10 times better yeah and zoe de chanel miscasted really i don't like her i like her in like 500 days of summer but like not any anything else i like new girl okay whatever Anyways, we're not talking about her, but... You know how M. Night would always have, like, a person from a movie going to be in the next movie? So, like, Walking Phoenix, yeah, Bryce Joaquin Dallas. Phoenix. Did anyone come from... Because what was... Was Lady in the Water before this one? Yes. So, like, was anyone from Lady in the Water in this movie? Or is um, that when he, like... Was stopped? John Leguizamo in it? Lady in was the Water? He... he is in Lady in the Water. He's Remember, he's, like, the one muscular arm? Oh. See, I forgot about that So, movie. he's in The Happening? Yeah. Okay, so he's the and then what? Is that like now? a trend? Is like actually that was a thing he always did. He was like, okay, you were in this movie. I'll do you another favor. Be in this movie. Yeah. But like when it came to, uh, like, did he break it for? No, there was Last Airbender and all that other shit. Well, yeah, we don't count those. Okay, whatever. I'm cutting all this out. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this is boring. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to number four. My number four is another tie. Lady in the Water, huh? No. Stuart Little. No. <laughs> My tie is Knock at the Door. You can't even say the movie, right? What is it? Knock at the Cabin. Oh, Knock at the Cabin. And Old. Yeah. Good choice. Mm -hmm. I like them both. We went and saw Old together. Yeah. Did we see Knock at the Cabin together? Yep. Yeah. Damn, we saw both of them. We did. I liked Old a lot better. Well, you read the book. Yeah, I think it's like a better, like a better movie for a few different reasons. But I like olds because, like, I have a thing where I love movies that are on islands or like that take place like on an island or a beach. Yeah, that's so, what I like about it. Yeah, it's like I just I love it so much. And Gail Bernard Garcia. 
I love him. For some reason, I thought it was Andy Garcia, and I was like, oh, wait, that's a different dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like those movies, too. Abby Lee, mm-hmm. when she becomes all, like, twisted. And, yeah. Like, it's, like, really funny. Because, mm-hmm. like, the whole time in the movie, she's, like, looking at herself in the mirror every 10 seconds. She's like, like I have osteoporosis. Oh, yeah, and she has, like, she's literally hunchback of Notre Dame at the end. <laughs> so funny yeah i i liked how it was kind of just like a weird movie it is that was based on a graphic novel Mm -hmm. even like the explanation of how the beach works is just weird yeah you know i don't know the rocks yeah i think it was coral like if you that it's you won't age if you go through there but the movie like ends with the two kids being like middle-aged it's just so it's such a weird movie yeah bad timing though because it came out during the pandemic and the end is about how like big pharma is testing for like vaccines and medicine and stuff and i was like oh that's bad timing it almost comes off as like anti-vaccine maybe it is yikes if um if that's what you believe in to each their own Mm -hmm. what's your number four Okay, my number four, we already talked about this because you said it, Split. Nice. And for all the reasons that you said, like, I love James Malkavoy's acting. He should have been nominated for, like, an award for that because, like, no one can do that. Like, I mean, Patricia. Oh, yeah. That's, like, my um, alter ego. (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah, that plot twist is what, like, hooked me. I was like, oh. And then I was like... So excited for, like, the next movie that came out. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. I was like, but whoa. That movie was a downer. Or not a downer, but, like, it was a letdown. Well, because, yeah, it's like you kind of get too close to the sun. Yeah. You know, like, that was such a legend, like, iconic Unbreakable was. And then so to, like, try to kind of randomly throw this other one out there is, yeah. like, whoa. Oh, and then that was, like, before Bruce Willis had his, like, yeah. thing. What is it? Dementia? Mm -hmm. So sad. What's your number three? I think my number three is The Village. Oh. It was a really hard choice. I love The Village. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw it in ton in the theater. I loved it. I love the music. I, like, didn't really know, like, who Roger Deakins was at the time, but, you know, it's a gorgeous film. Yeah. Walking Phoenix. It was like, oh, my God, yes, he's going to be another M. Night movie. And then he was just, like, adorable His character is, like, really quiet and, like, stoic. Where, like, in Signs, he's, like, the funny friend or brother. Yeah. And I love the setting. I love how everyone talked. The Um, olden day talk. Okay, I forgot all about that. I didn't know that they had accents. Um, Well, it's, like, the way you talked, like, what should we do with our stolen time? Is, like, a Um, line? Like, that kind of shit? Jesse Eisberg or whatever is in it? Yeah. From um, the Facebook movie social network yeah yeah i don't know just like everything about it i think i didn't know what i thought when the twist happened like the first i saw but i like it i like it a lot actually i don't have an issue with it um and i think the only thing like revisiting and stuff and like being more critical is like it the adrian brody thing again is like villainizing someone who is like neurodivergent or whatever yeah and they don't really like resolve that (laughs) they're just like he's bad (laughs) Another thing about him is he was he was who was skinning animals and like leaving them around. Oh. I'm like, okay, you really made him look like, and he's if you don't remember, he's like, um, he's special needs. Is I don't know how to say it. You know, I think he's like supposed to be like really underdeveloped, and it's really sad. Mm-hmm. But also, like his ending's kind of random too. Yeah. You know, because it's like at this point, like she already knows they're not real. Um. Well, she's blind. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that part. But the parents are kind of like, okay, hey, this is who we really are. Yeah. But then then it's like, do they go? So whenever they need uh, medicine, do they go back out there? I think so. I think it'll probably turn into like, they'll kind of like Amish. Like they'll live that life, but be able to like come into modern world if they really need to. I thought it was like really funny that like the creatures (laughs) were like giant porcupines. I know. Porcupine (laughs) pigs. (laughs) In like robes. I know when I first saw it, I remember just being like, what are those? I was like, that's the creature. Yeah. It looks like 
uh like a man in a suit they did a good job though like before you find out like the night when everyone's like running and he like comes and finds her and like grabs her hand like when the thing's outside and you see it like in the background like it is creepy it's like really yeah, creepy when it's, like, blurry yeah because it doesn't run but it like comes you know and it's like creepy but then yeah eventually yeah. you're like the fuck is that <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's part of the reason I didn't mind the ending because no. I think if it was a real creature, I would have that would have taken me out a lot because it's so yeah. goofy. But yeah, it's you know, it's a bore, literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, what's your number three? My number three is the visit. For all the reasons that you mentioned, I feel like we don't need to talk about it because it was one of those movies that like also produced by Blumhouse. Oh, so like M Night made that movie. With his own money, yeah, self-funded like, budget was five thousand or five, five or five million. Oh, okay, God, I was like, <laughs> "There's no way five thousand dollars like what million. you spend in like a day, if that." Yeah, and I guess it takes place like in one location, basically. Yeah, and they got um Catherine, Catherine Hahn, Catherine Hot, yeah, <laughs> Catherine Hot as the mom. <laughs> <laughs> I usually can't watch found footage movies because I get so dizzy, but this one I could stomach because it was like the camera work was very subtle with like shaky movements. So it was like really well done. I like love found footage. I know a yeah. lot of people hate on it, but I like it. Cloverfield. As above, so below. Oh my God. Yes. So good. Yeah. Uh, the visit. It's like intense. It's wild. It's crazy. It's campy. I did you see it. it in the theater? I did. And like everyone gasped that twist. Yeah. <laughs> Those old people. Yeah. <laughs> they were really good. The grandma. Yeah. Gall- <laughs> galloping under the house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was so funny. I will say that's like the one thing I don't like about the movie though is like the mom doesn't have like a close relationship with her parents, but she straight up doesn't see them when the kids get there, doesn't talk to them, just talks to the kids. Because she's on a cruise. That's crazy. She's like, I'm like, having a blast right now. I'm just calling in a check on you while I get plowed later. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I guess. I was just like, she's kind of a horrible mom. She does come off as like a young mom. I just, I just think it's like who on earth would just like throw their kids kids at their estranged parents right i mean they had to take a bus to get there yeah like or not a bus a train or something yeah train. it was like a pretty crazy that she yeah. didn't like say hey guys have fun with my kids like no kind of mm-hmm. but i guess i don't know if like the grand i mean i don't know whatever it just seemed kind of weird plot hole yeah but other than that i loved it okay what's your number two okay my number again it's just like so hard but at the same time it's a sixth sense. Oh my god, mine too. Ooh. Yeah. Rewatching it last week. Wow. I had mm-hmm. not watched it in a really long time. It still totally holds up. It's like better than I remember. Haley Joe Osmond, phenomenal. Yes. It's Bruce's best role too. Yeah. They're both it, really good. They should have been nominated for awards for like whatever. Yeah. Wait a minute. Haley Joe Osmond was beat by Michael Caine. Oh. Yeah. And I remember being like, okay, well, yeah, I guess like that's kind of a tough pick, like this amazing child or Michael Caine. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, but I mean, still so cool he got nominated. He's just yeah, like so he's young. Yeah, like a little kid and like, he's yeah. a, He's fucking phenomenal phenomenal yeah all of those scary scenes are really good i felt for that kid like i'd be fucking scared too if i kept seeing ghosts oh my gosh okay my favorite scene is that tent scene oh yeah he goes into the tent with all the rosemaries and like the crosses and then Mm -hmm. uh misha barton shows up and she's like i feel better now yeah and like throws up everywhere (laughs) And that's just after Bruce was like, or what's his name in the movie? Malcolm. Malcolm? That sounds right, yeah. It's like right after Malcolm said to him, like, maybe you should try, like, listening to the ghosts. And so he's really scared, but he knows he, like, needs to try to listen. Yeah. And it kind of just works out that it's, like, another kid. I just think the pacing, all of, just all of their performances is, like, so, it's just such a fucking good movie. Like, it just seems like everyone gave their all. Yeah, even Tony Collette. Amazing. She's so good in it. Yeah, and she only had that one bit and all she was doing was fucking crying. 
Because, yeah. like, oh. Haley talks about his, their grandma, yeah. his grandma, her mom. That's just, like, a really good scene. Mm-hmm. So powerful. Yeah. Well, and her her whole thing trying to figure out what's going on with her son is really intense, too. Like, finding a hole in his shirt and, like, having to get him out of that, like, chamber those boys put him in. Oh, in the attic? Yeah. Or that, um, it's called, like, a dumbwaiter. Oh, it was a dumbwaiter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, there's just so much, like, for her. But I was going to say, um, my partner was like, is that dog real or is it a goat? Remember there's like a puppy husky that he has? It's in their house and like every time she's doing laundry or something he's like in a laundry basket <gasps> or like there's this husky puppy but she never acknowledges the dog. Really? Yeah, but Haley Joe does. Mm. It's re- take a look at it sometime. It's really oh weird. My God. Yeah, no, I think that movie that movie is like it is definitely just such a masterpiece. I think it really like obviously got him like that immediate respect. Yeah. It's so good. I fucking love it. Oh my gosh. When he's like, I'm ready to tell you my secret. And like the way it just cuts to Bruce, just go like just look. I don't know. It's so good. I know. He's just like dumbfounded. He's like yeah, and that whole thing is like so devastating about the man. Oh my gosh, so devastating. Again, a little problematic that people like yeah. it kind of insinuates people with schizophrenia or something have they're just seeing ghosts. Wait, who is that actor? It is Robbie Wahlberg or Bobby uh, Wahlberg. Donnie Wahlberg. Donnie Wahlberg. Oh my god, isn't that crazy? Yeah, and then skinny got- legend. But I was gonna say, but there, there, it is really interesting watching, like knowing the t- the twist because you're just like, yeah, he never interacts with this kid's mom. Which again, though, I would be like, okay, that's your job. You're just not gonna talk to this kid's like, who's paying you? Like, this is so strange. And then like that was the thing is the first time I ever watched it, I always thought the thing with him and his wife didn't make sense. I'm like, why isn't she yeah. talking to him? Yeah, it seems really I was weird. Like, is she just like pissed off like that much that she's like, just like giving him the silent treatment for like ever? such a toxic bitch and then i was like oh never mind right you're not a toxic bitch <laughs> you're sad <laughs> yeah i rewatched that scene the other day and i noticed like just how they choreograph that like perfectly like he's like talking to her yeah. it looks like she's not listening but he's actually not there okay fuck we spoiled this whole movie <laughs> uh-huh. to the person that has not seen this movie don't listen to that part but yeah. spoiler alert um he's dead <laughs> 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 and it makes sense why like the wife was like not talking to him mm-hmm. but like realistically no relationship like there's no way he would have like shook her or something yeah. you know but the only time like she's actually talking to him is when she's sleeping i know and it's like oh my god tragic and she's always watching their wedding video it's like so sad yeah and the music yeah that like makes it so dramatic like yeah. it's it's not even like a, a scary movie anymore it's very beautiful and it's like haunting james newton howard shout, shout out, out. <laughs> <laughs> okay what's your number two that is my number two <gasps> snap crackle pop okay before we get into number one i have a couple honorable mentions let's do it the village because for all the reasons that you said it's beautiful like beautifully shot and it also kind of has that cult vibe which i thought that's what the movie was going towards like with the creatures and stuff but no (laughs) it operates as they operate as a cult like i think it is like very like what that um Midsummer, <laughs> Mid- no, the missionary in like Utah. Oh, uh, uh, there's like a LDS. Whatever, there's a documentary on it, and it's like that's what it gives me. But okay, my other honorable mention is Unbreakable. I mean, I like this movie, but not as much as a lot of people do. Same, because Sixth Sense was like you know a thriller. This felt more like a drama. It's a very distant like comic book. Yeah. I mean, it's really good, just like the way it's done and like the cinematography and like the, the cinematography tone. of it all. Yeah, <laughs> the tone, like all the raining shots, yeah. it's like really cool. But I also like how this movie also sets up like the future M Night Shyamalan movies. Mm-hmm. If you don't know, yeah, I I'm like so like whatever about Unbreakable. Oh, um, I wouldn't say it's a bad movie. Like I I think if like Samuel Jackson's character wasn't a part of it, I would not like that movie. He's kind of the only thing I like yeah. about it. 
I just don't really care about some dude who takes off his wedding ring and like lifts weights. <laughs> but like, he goes around like saving the day. Like he's like, yeah. you know, a vigilante. It's a superhero movie that really humanizes them. Because mm-hmm. Mr. Glass shatters like glass because he has brittle bone disease. Yeah. But it's like so intense. Anyways, what's your number one? I mean, what's our number one? <laughs> right? I feel like it's really obvious. <laughs> Signs. And I feel like we don't have to talk much about this because we already have an episode about it. And, you know, to say less about it, I love this movie. Everything about it. It is the best scary alien movie. Because it's the scariest. Yeah, and it just feels so real. Like, it's kind of like War of the Worlds, but, like, in a different way. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's not Independence Day. It's, like... It's more... It feels more like it could happen to you. Yeah, because it could happen in your backyard. Yeah. And you wouldn't know. I mean, a cornfield. Have you ever been around a cornfield? Oh, my God. I almost got lost in a cornfield. No. Mm-mm. Dude, there's, like, some pretty intense spiders in cornfields. And snakes. Ew. Yeah. Fuck, dude. Well, I grew up in like a small town, so like yeah. cornfields were like everywhere, and like sometimes we would pl- mean like a bunch of kids would like go play hide and seek in the cornfield no. at night, and I was like, "Fuck, I'm gonna be lost and stuck in here forever." That's so scary. It'll be like that movie in the tall grass. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I never saw that. Okay, but but what's your favorite scene in Signs? Let's at least talk about that. I'm just going to say the birthday scene because, Mm -hmm. like, Uncle Merrill, he's, Mm -hmm. like, watching the news, and it's, like, super intense, and this is, like, the first time we're seeing something Mm -hmm. because everything is built up, but then now we're finally getting, like, footage of this alien. Yeah. And it looks so real. Like, Mm -hmm. it looks... Because it's... All these kids are just, like... You know, they look scared and they're like, it's behind. Yeah. Yeah. And it just feels so real. I don't even know. It looks like. There's so much build up. It's supposed to be in like Brazil, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And that's what makes it really fucking scary because it's like another country. Yeah. So you don't know what they're saying. Yeah. And it just like also that it's, it's happening in another country yeah not just their backyard right because people are starting to talk the dog stuff happened i also i must say because we watched it recently you know yeah i must say that that movie looks so old yeah it's really aged like watching it i'm like whoa because it was shot on film right yeah but even just like everything in it like think about like the soda commercials they're watching because that soda commercial looks like it's from like the 80s yeah it like feels really old but even like like the soda shop shop, like the the pharmacy like everything feel i mean it it's like we were alive for that but just like watching it right now it's just like wow everything looks a lot different oh i think my favorite scenes like it it's it's kind of hard to really say you know but i think it is when they're talk when the kids are asleep and they're on the couch talking about what type of person you are because yeah i think it's like yeah just like it's so good and then i love like yeah like the comedy that meryl brings because he's like this one time this like <laughs> oh, girl yeah, was gonna girl. kiss me and then she threw up and i knew well he was like <laughs> i had to spit out my gum and then i turn around she's puking <laughs> and that was like a miracle <laughs> no, that he wasn't <laughs> kissing her <laughs> so funny yeah that scene was funny yeah but that is like a thing and like even i was telling you on a diff- i think we were recording a different episode but like how i have all these like psychic things yeah like all the time and i'm always it always does feel like the universe is like talking to me you know but i never know what it's talking about oh interesting like when that's it's always just seems like insignificant things sometimes though it's something and i'm like okay that's kind of weird yeah there was something where it was like I think, like, there was, like, a plane accident in the book I was reading and a plane accident in, like, a show I started and then, like, a plane accident in the newspaper and it all happened, like, within a day and I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. Wow. It's just weird. It's a weird in a way where I go, I knew you, I knew this was going to come up. This thing that's so so random, I never, anything, I'm going to think about it for the first time in, like, 10 years. Yeah. And the next morning, I'm going to, it's going to be in my life somehow. And I'm like, okay, that's fucking weird. Yeah. Well, it sounds like Brittany has a miracle. 
I am like a lot of my life has been like Sagittarius. existential, like faith, like such a Sagittarius. <laughs> We are optimistic. We're supposed to yeah. be. Yeah. Right. We're definitely like, I think, people who like are always wondering and dissecting. And <laughs> I have faith. But I have definitely had a lot of, like, I can relate to him a lot about, like, you know, having a spiritual death and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, we hope you enjoyed this bonus episode. Brittany, where can we find you? You can find me at humble underscore book underscore review and you can find me on instagram and tiktok at some call me underscore ricky and if you liked this episode you can find us on instagram and youtube at paper screen podcast we'd love to hear your thoughts just hit subscribe we're not we're not gonna be releasing any episodes for a few months so like hit subscribe and just you know we'll we'll come let you know when we're back and on that note mm, bye, bye.